It's really a mess. Doesn't look like you had a chance to clean the place up. Yeah. Did you get what you need? Yeah, it's gonna be good. Thanks. We blew it, Thea. I agree. Uh-huh. I'm not patronizing you. I'm agreeing. Yeah, well, then they're taking a dinner It's not the same thing. Have a good weekend. Uh, you too. Uh, Thea, we just... Have to remember that things aren't the same as they were when you were city editor here. Uh huh. Right. Goodbye, kiddo. Have a good one, Art. Hi. Oh, Reuben. Thea Taft says I owe you an apology. She says that your story on the missing kid was better than we played it. I told you so. Uh, one little old lady's opinion. One sharp little old lady. <laughs> hey, Lou, how come we didn't think of this? Uh, you see this, Art? Plane crash from Germany? Yeah, yeah, I did. This old guy, Hartberg, from L.A., was one of the American victims. They went into his apartment in Whittier and took pictures of how he left it. I mean, the dirty dishes, laundry all over the place. Yeah, you could just picture this old man sitting there, living out his life, going on, and cut off. Good idea. Well, we had the interview with a neighbor. Look at these pictures. Nice. I hope Thea Taft doesn't have my home number. Even I'd be calling me about this. <laughs> Good weekend, guys. You too. Night, Lou. Hey! Guess what? I'm a newspaper man at the end of an awful week. Don't ask me to guess what. I've been appointed to the Western States News Council. I just got the call. Congratulations. Thanks. What's wrong? Nothing. That's what you want to do with your life. Why wouldn't I? Ah, uh, you know those stupid cases they bring before the council. Some guy in sports writes, professional wrestling is a fake. So Mad Dog Monsoon reads it, doesn't enjoy it, and brings his case before the news council. It's better than giving the sports writer a body slam. So you have the excruciating pleasure of trying to decide if the story is journalistically fair or if the reporter should be censured. I think it's a good way for journalism to regulate itself. What do we need it for? If we're wrong, we print a retraction. It's not that simple, Lou. Newspapers do screw up. Some less than others, I hope. Hi. Hello, Miss Pigeon. Mr. Grant, I just heard about your appointment to the council, Mr. Hill. I'd like you to know how very pleased I am. Thanks, you didn't have to come all the way down for that. Well, I didn't. I'd like to speak to the two of you privately, please. Oh, sure. Come on. You both know Gordon Bauman, don't you? Yeah. Publisher? Well, for years he's been after me to write my autobiography, and I've always said I didn't think I was interesting enough. I suppose I convinced him because he's finally stopped asking me. It's too bad. I think you're underestimating yourself. Well, I'm glad you said that, because now someone else has caught me. They're putting together a collection of autobiographical pieces about powerful women in America. 
to be called Women with Clout. God willing, they'll change the title. Sounds interesting. Well, I've been making some notes since then. I find writing about oneself is a lot more difficult than I thought. I think I need a collaborator. Can you give me some suggestions? There's uh, Ted Coleridge of the Times. He's written a dozen books. A really fine writer, good with biographies. Well, I was thinking of someone with the trib. Uh, is that really such a good idea? Why wouldn't it be, Mr. Brown? Well, I don't know. Maybe it would be better to have someone with a little more detachment. Why do you want someone from the trip? Because if I want someone from this paper, I ought to be able to get someone without an argument from either of you. Uh, what about Regina Kelly from the Today side? I don't want this to be a puff piece. And also Rossi. Joe Rossi and me alone in a room for a month. Mr. Grant, I'll give you ten seconds to think that one over. <laughs> No, I was considering Billy Newman. How do you think she will respond? Attention, please. Oh, those aren't for me. Yes, they just keep coming. Oh, it looks like a funeral parlor in there. Why don't you take these home for yourself? Oh, I shouldn't. Please, then take the rest of maternity. I would like to keep the lilies. That's very nice of you. <laughs> That's the least I can do, dear. Well, I guess the story finally turned out okay, but I'm glad to be off it. What's the matter? Bad day? You've heard of Bibi Stroud? Oh, right. Jack Town had something in his column. She was taken to the hospital yesterday for what? Appendicitis. It happened right before one of her famous charity parties, didn't it? No, it was her birthday party for her. She's on my floor. Uh, giving you a hard time? No, no, she's very nice. The thing is, she didn't want to cancel the party, so her friends went ahead with it anyway. There were a lot of important people, and they made a tape of it so that she wouldn't feel left out. So? I did something I, I know I shouldn't have. If I tell you, I won't be able to undo it. Amalia, what? Okay. Listen to this. Is that it? Speaking of that's incredible, did you see who was on last week's show? A Chicano family with just one child and paid up car insurance. Oh, Jim, that's terrible. Oh, well, then you don't want to hear uh, about why only 500 Mexicans attacked the Alamo. Okay, why? Because that's all that can fit in two cars. <laughs> well? If you want me to invest in this as a new party record, forget it. Don't you recognize the voice? Who? The big comedian making all the racial comments. Speaking of that's incredible. Did you see who was on last week's show? A Chicano family with just one child and paid up car insurance. Sounds sort of familiar. Jim Garbers, Councilman Jim Garbers. Where'd you get this tape? I have to protect my source. Really protect. This is a copy. The original is back with the owner. Mm-hmm. Your wife's still working at Wilshire Memorial? Look, I want to quote it for the garbage story I'm doing. I don't think so. Why not? Oh, it just doesn't seem right. This is a private party. With public figures who knew their comments were being recorded. No, yeah, well, they didn't know it was going to get out. We should publish this, Lou. Haven't you ever made a joke in your life? People say things sometimes. Doesn't necessarily mean you're a bigot. You know that a large portion of Garber's constituency is Latino. They in fact, I voted for them. They have a right to be told what the representative thinks of them. What do you two do? Get together and prep for this debate? Yeah. Oh. Are you 100% sure that the uh, voice is Garber's? It took me all weekend, but I tracked down some of the help from the party. The bartender confirmed it off the record. That makes two sources, one of them right in our hands. All right. Look, 
We'll run it by the legal department. If they say it's okay, we'll go with it. Great. Okay. Then the woman has no complaint against the nature of the TV interview itself. No, her only objection was to the attitude of the anchor man when they cut back to the studio. Well, what did she expect? Hush reverence? She was discussing a singing seal. Hardly seems worthy of our counsel's time, does it? Our time isn't the question. We're discussing the validity of the complaint. I realize that the Tribune is a big operation, Mr. Hume, but uh, you're too busy. Perhaps you shouldn't have taken the appointment. <sighs> I didn't mean... Oh, of course not. All in favor of accepting this case for investigation? Opposed? Abstentions. Moving right along, then. Is there anyone who hasn't had a chance to study the next complaint? Where are we? The photo spread on the plane crash victim's home. The family is charging invasion of privacy. It's right in front of you. Okay. I got it. You're welcome. Terrible. Can you imagine anyone living like that? Was the family informed about the feature beforehand? Well, they said they had no idea until a friend saw it published. The photographer went along with someone from the sheriff's office and they were sealing the house. Where are they legally? I mean, can you invade the privacy of someone who's dead? Well, the family isn't bringing legal action. They're asking us to question the journalistic responsibility and the way it was handled, and I think that's something we should follow through on. I move we hear the arguments. I second that. I'm not clear on one point. We don't discuss now. You'll get your chance later. Well, I have to tell you, I think I'm the wrong person for this. Don't be modest. Mr. Grant, give me some help here. Uh, why don't you do it? It's not that I don't think I'm a good enough writer, it, but basically I'm a reporter. You wouldn't hire a photojournalist to shoot a portrait. She's got a point. Mr. Grant, I don't like those flattering, self-serving profiles. I want a reporter. Then I'm probably the wrong reporter. Some people think of me as a softy, but I'm not. I'm tough. Tell her, Lou. That's true. She can be tough. I can be tough, too. Tell her, Mr. Ground. She can be tough, too. Well, what's the deadline? Four weeks. Oh, that's pretty tight. I don't think Lou can spare me. I'm sure if I ask him nicely, he'd oblige. Oh, uh, we can work something out. I really do think this could open up a great many things for you. And the, uh, the amount of money quoted to me was most generous. Now, understand the reason I've turned to you is because I know you'll take a lot of initiative. Mrs. Pinchon, you don't have to say any more. Oh. I could use the money. And as long as I have a free hand, I think it would be a very interesting project. <laughs> Thank you for thinking of me. Well, I couldn't be more pleased. <laughs> now, I'll need you every morning for three hours until we get the groundwork done. Oh, I don't think I have three hours. We'll need at least that. <sighs> I told you, she's tough. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on A&E. You know, I can't figure out what's wrong with this woman on the news council. Let me try something on you. Uh, I'm sitting in here, you walk in, and I stand up. What do you think? About what? Are you offended? That you were polite? No. Why should I be? Well, I don't know. I mean, some of these women think it's sexist for a man to stand up and open doors. Maybe she's like that. Maybe, but I think it's nice. Could have been something I caught her. Honey? Ms. Sutton. Maybe I should have called her Ms. Hall Sutton. I mean, what do you call a hyphen? Maybe you should have called her Dr. Hall Sutton. Didn't you say she's a dean? Of the law school. You think that's it? I think you're making too much of it. She's probably crazy about you, just trying to hide her true feelings. You realize we're overlooking a pretty obvious point here. Maybe you just rub it the wrong way. That's very helpful. It happens. Sometimes you meet somebody, you start talking, all of a sudden they turn off for no reason at all. Did that ever happen to you? Yeah. Once in a while. Speaking of people being turned off, I bet Jim Garber is crazy about you these days. Why, what did you hear? The Chicano community is up in arms about what he said on that tape. He's really going to have to scramble to get reelected. Oh, all right. Billy, is this yours? Uh, no, I didn't order. I had to go, and Mrs. Pinchon is meeting me in the lobby. How's that been? 
We're moving right along. We're finally up to 1937. The orchestra was up here. And you could hear music wherever you were on the estate. Blue lights were in the trees. Gardenias in the pool. It must have been beautiful. Well, the occasion was a gala for the Duke and Duchess of Windsor, thrown by the British consulate. It was a diplomatic crowd. I didn't get invited. Matthew was courting me. It was all very exciting. He was 35. He was already the assistant publisher in my father's paper. Every girl in town wanted him. Anyway, I insisted that he get us in. Matthew wasn't fond of the Duke, whom he considered a bit dim on certain matters. And when he couldn't wangle an invitation, I behaved as if it were the end of the world. I was terrible. You know how you could be when you're 20. But the afternoon before the party, he showed up at my house. He did it. Brilliantly. He had us smuggled in as part of the caterer's staff. <laughs> we served drinks and hors d'oeuvres. It was a riot. And nobody spotted you? Oh, nobody looks at servants. My dear, the things we overheard that night Oh, and I remember after it was over how sore my feet were. I imagine the host was rather surprised to see a maid and the bartender zooming down the drive in a packet convertible. I didn't get home till after dawn. My father was furious. Was that the first time you stayed out all night? Lord, no. Said I was 20. Photographer said he tried to reach Mr. Hawkeberg's family and couldn't. He was under deadline, so he just went ahead and used his own judgment. Well, these photos make this man look like he lived in a pigsty, but they left out some facts. This man was on his way to Germany for the first time in 40 years because his sister died of a heart attack. Didn't have time to clean his apartment, and he certainly didn't expect a visit from the press. It's an invasion of privacy. Beyond that, when the man's family asked for a correction, it was ignored. The newspaper said the photographs told the story sufficiently. As we can see, that's truly not the case. I have to agree with Dr. Hall, Sutton. Seems to me the paper wasn't very concerned with presenting the true picture of this man's life. Well, that's not exactly what I said. Does this mean that the Tribune is going to start tidying up its own house? If there's no further discussion, I move for a vote. Second. Those concurring that the complaints yeah. asserted in this matter are warranted. Dissenting? Abstentions. Note complaints are found warranted. Ever since the news council censured those guys for the pictures of the old man's apartment, these guys and editors around here spooked. Hey, how's that? I mean, why should I knock myself out to get some really hot shot? I know my photo editor's gonna back off. He's worried about getting the paper in trouble. That's not his problem. Why don't you tell him to let me worry about it? Yeah, Lou will get the paper in trouble all by himself. Huh. You know, those pictures of the comic books all over Mr. Hochberg's apartment made him look like a demented old geezer. Yeah. Well, when they investigated, his daughter explained that he used to buy those comic books for his grandson. Then he'd read them first to see that they weren't too violent. Those pictures did the man a disservice. Does the idea of a news council watching over us bother anybody but me? A lot of professions have regulating groups, the bar, the AMA. It's not the same. What's the most satisfying reaction you've had to a story? Oh, that would be going all the way back to Detroit. They closed the factory down after I exposed the fact that they were using little kids to do piecework. <laughs> Best reaction? No contest. When Congressman Bragg threw his scrambled eggs at my lens as I was taking his picture when he was having breakfast with a lady who was not his wife. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess I can't count this as my best, considering my life is one straight at all, but it's pretty good. I just found out that Garber and his lawyers were talking about a libel suit against the trip. Pinchon told them to take a hike. But things must be heating up pretty good for them to try a stunt like this. A week in Aspen. What? The most satisfying reaction to a story. I'd, uh, I'd interviewed this singer. She liked what I wrote. She called to say thank you. We chatted a bit. Found out that we both like skiing. Well, I realized that it's not scrambled eggs on your lens. <laughs> 
I think you're remarkable. We've gone all this way through dinner, and you've yet to remark on my serving you chili. I love it. I make my husband chili all the time. I really wanted to serve veal prince all of. But I find it's, it's too hard for me to make now. You made this? Mm. Where'd you get the recipe? In the trip cafeteria. <laughs> my housekeeper, Elena, took the night off. She wants to get some of her family out of El Salvador. She went to see an attorney. You did very well as a pinch hitter. But I'm afraid this is rather hard. It's fine. I never know what to drink with chili. Why don't you serve your husband? Beer. Oh, that would have been so good. I wish I'd thought of it. These are 1940-41. Or somewhere in there. Oh, what a nice picture of Mr. Pinchon. And he was a dreamboat. Mm -hmm. This is the publisher's dinner. Matthew was named man of the year. My husband wore evening clothes better than any man I've ever known. Who is he? He keeps turning up in all of these. What an attractive man. Oh, Jack Hall. He was Matthew's managing editor. Should I know him? No, he left the Tribune years ago. Oh, here's another one with... Are those his children? Yes, uh, the John Jr. and Mary. Why don't I get some more boxes? I had these dug out of storage when I came home from the hospital. I hadn't looked at them in years. And there was so much that I wanted to go back and see again. I suppose that's natural. You know, there is a lot I've forgotten about. It seems to me that the period that we should focus on is the transition you made from socialite to publisher almost overnight. It couldn't have been easy for you. No, it wasn't. Especially without a managing editor to lean on. What about Mr. Hall? Well, he left about the same time. Why? Well, I suppose he wanted a change. What do you say we zero in on that period when you were suddenly in charge? The decisions, the, the changes you went through? I was met with a situation and I faced it. That's all. Why don't I get us some tea? We may be here a while. <laughs> You guys did a nice job on that second press deed scam. Oh, thanks. I want to do a follow-up. Good right idea. Hello. <laughs> this just came in the mail. It's from the Western States News Council. Garber has filed a complaint against Rossi's story. We're being investigated. I know. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and &E. You knew about this? I agreed not to discuss it until we received formal notification. Couldn't you at least have given us a hint? What difference would it have made? You're still going to have to work out a written statement answering Garber's charge. Me? The complaint is against the Tribune with you as representative. The hell with them. You can't say that. I said it. I mean, we can't ignore this, Lou. In the first place, the Trib is one of the Council's major financial contributors. How would it look if the first time we're brought up on charges, we refuse to cooperate? You know what I think about this, don't you? Yeah, I know what you think about this. But it's going to be heard with or without our cooperation. We might as well take the opportunity to defend ourselves. What happens next? The Council staff investigates the complaint from our side and Garber's. Yeah. What kind of investigation? I don't think I should say anymore. Why not? I have to take a neutral position in this. It's your newspaper, too. Exactly. I'm not asking for any professional secrets, just an idea of what to expect. Sorry. For God's sake, Charlie, those meetings are public record. I could look it up. I guess that's what you're going to have to do.
Hope you made the right decision. About what? The news council complaint. What are you doing? Listening at keyholes? Word's been out all morning. I just hope we're going to ignore it. Well, we're not. What? I'm sorry, but if you think I'm even going to dignify those charges by going up in front of that stupid boy... You won't have to. You may be questioned, but the complaint's against me. You? Yeah. How come? It's my story. The food here is not what it used to be. Mm. Since you and Mr. Pinchon ate here last, they probably trained chefs. It's too bad they didn't do the same with the table in it. Have you had a chance to look at some of my business correspondence from the late 60s? Yes, all that period is really starting to fall into place. But the period that still is unclear to me, and the part that interests me most, is the transition a few years earlier from socialite to publisher. Well, possibly, because it's the least clear to me, too. It was so emotionally confusing. I had so much to do, I could scarcely think. I'm sorry, I can't be more helpful. There weren't many women in important positions of the Trib then, were there? Oh, except Thea Taft. Well, Thea had already retired as city editor by the time I took over. Did you expect to succeed your husband? I never dreamed I'd have to make that decision. But what happened? Did the board insist, or...? The board suggested I take a figurehead position so the paper could continue in the family tradition. Then they were surprised when you took an active role as publisher. Oh, that's what I did. So, uh, Paul McAndrews was on the board that year. Did I tell you about the terrible fight we had over Adelaide Stevenson? To keep on this just a minute, why did you become active? Actually, it was less over Governor Stevenson than his campaign manager, who was an old nemesis of Matthews. It was in 1956. I just want you to know I am really ticked off. Okay. I just came from an interview with some bozo from the news council. I have never seen worse journalistic instincts. I wound up feeding him questions to ask me. Oh, good. I hope you helped him really nail us. Don't worry. I had the answers ready. But I can't believe these are the people questioning my professional judgment. Did they talk to you yet? Yesterday. Do you agree with me? I think if H.L. Mencken were on the Western States News Council, you'd call him a bozo. And yes, I agree with you. Did you ever know somebody named Jack Hall? Sure, former managing editor. Great with the ladies. You know it. No, but people used to tell me that I reminded them of him. So I assume he was great with the ladies. Why? <laughs> it's for the piece I'm doing with Mrs. Pinchon. I'm trying to find some information about the period when she took over the paper. For some reason, she won't talk about it. It was probably a hard time for her. It's right after her husband died. I'm sure. Anyway, this guy, Jack Hall, was right in there, and he seems like the person to ask, but I don't know where to find him. Try Forrest Lawn. He died about six or seven years ago. I remember running the story. Damn. You went home. I started to, but the news council's meeting tomorrow. They might ask me some questions before I got out their published reports. Did you know that Frank Laban was on their board? The gossip columns? Amazing, isn't it? What are you doing here so late? I'm checking clips on the time of Matthew Pinchon's death and the transition of power. Every time I ask her about that period, she invades or stonewalls or tells me some amusing anecdote about Adley Stevenson. I feel like she's holding back the good stuff. Well, that's not tough. My endorse you is tough. Yeah. She promised me a free hand. Well, every time she stops giving it to you, you grind to a stop. I'm not grinding to a stop. I'm spending my evenings in the library. Listen, the more she denies that anything interesting went on in that period of her life, the more I know there was something cooking. Oh. Son of a gun. What? What? I'm sorry. You find something? Uh, an article published the week after Matthew Pinchon's death. There are no plans for any immediate changes in the Tribune's editorial policy according to Matthew Pinchon's apparent successor. Jack Hall.
Before we get started, I'd like to say that I'm going to abstain from the discussion of Garber's complaint against the Tribune. All right. Now, there are two issues here. Whether the Tribune was justified in quoting comments made in private, and whether the means of obtaining those quotes was legitimate. Well, I have information that Councilman Garber's letter in response to the article in the Tribune was never published. That was his choice. Excuse me, Lou Grant, Metro Editor of the Tribune. Uh, we told Garbers we would publish his letter, but that we would add an editor's note restating the quotes had been confirmed by a second source. He turned us down. Yes, it's all right here in the reports. Are you saying that the Tribune has a vendetta against Garbers? I'm saying that the quotes taken from a stolen tape were printed out of context. And no bigotry had a context. The staff's report contains statements from several leaders in the Mexican-American community indicating that this was not at all representative of the councilman's true feelings. Every one of those Mexican-American leaders is a political ally of Garber's. The Tribune has never printed a response from Garber's. Before we published the story, we checked with Garber's office. They denied knowing the existence of the tape and refused to comment. It's in our story and it should be in your report. Mr. Grant, this is not allowed. There's no rule against it. What did you want to say, Mr. Grant? Uh, just that we printed the quotes verbatim. There was no editorializing or comment. May I ask you where you got the tape? The source was promised anonymity. And the person who confirmed that he had made these jokes? Also confidential. Is it custom for you to use uh, quotes from a private conversation? Technically, the party wasn't private because of the number of people there. But Mr. Garbers was not aware that he was speaking for the public record. I suppose not, or he wouldn't have said what he said. I see. Is there anything else that you'd like to tell us? Not at the moment. Thank you. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and &E. Oh, just a second. Hmm. That's a good follow-up on the Brentwood murder. Don't tell Lou I said so. It'll go to his head. I won't. I hear you tied them up. Yep. If you wanted a ball player, why didn't you bite your Venezuela? At least you'd be rich. <laughs> I proposed in English. He pretended not to understand. I do pretty well for myself. <laughs> He's treating you okay? Very. You look good, honey. So do you. Oh, you liar. Well, what can I do for you? I told you I was working on that memoir with Mrs. Pinchon, and I've been checking into the period when she took over as publisher. I knew you just retired as city editor, but I figured you knew everything that was going on. Try me. Help yourself to coffee. Thanks. What was people's general reaction to her taking over? Shock, mostly. None of us thought much of Margaret Pinchon, except that Matthew debutante. That's so hard to imagine. Honey, she did a complete overhaul. Up to that time, her most important job had been trying to remember Matthew's Christmas list. She always sent fruitcake. I was reading some old clips. One of them named Jack Hall as Matthew Pinchon's apparent successor. That's the way it should have been. Jack was his right hand. It was Margaret Pinchon fired him. Why? Well, I suppose he scared her. How? Well, in the first place, no one knew the newspaper and no one knew the town as Jack did. So she was scared of his ability? She was scared of the man. Listen, honey, we're talking about a very sexy man, terrific looking, crazy about women. Some gals liked it. Oh, I did. But he scared the pants off Margaret Pynchon. So she just fired him? Mm-hmm. I remember the day. People from the Trib kept calling me. Jack went up to Margaret's office and there was a big blowout. Later, someone spotted him leaving the building. And he never came back. The copy boy packed his desk for him. And Margaret didn't come out of her office all day. She's one cold woman. What happened to him? Well, he had some bad times. And he left for the East. It took him, I think, a year or more to get a hold of himself. His boy was killed in 68 in that stupid war. He had a daughter, too. I was thinking about trying to get in touch with her. She turned out to be a lawyer. She came back to L.A. teaching law school. Thanks. Her name's Mary? 
Mary, M-E-R-R-Y. Short for Meredith. Always check your spelling, dear. Hey, what are you doing here? Is it over? The final vote won't be taken until the next meeting. How'd it go? Hard to tell. Excuse me, please. Thank you. Talk about vendettas. I'm telling you, she's got one against a trip. Is that Meredith Hall Sutton? Yeah. I think you're right. Her father was Jack Hall. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on A and E. Doctor, doc, what? What am I supposed to call you anyway? It really doesn't matter. Can we talk? About the complaint? Yeah. Nothing to say. Council will decide at the next meeting. As you notice, I've abstained from the case. <sighs> yes, as you should. How about you? I just found out who your father was. What does that have to do with anything? Yeah, I couldn't figure out what was wrong, how I defended you. If you want to give me a hard time, it's okay. I can take it. But get off this case. One thing has absolutely nothing to do with the other, if that's what you're saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. You're not judging what's being discussed in that room. You're judging something that happened God knows how long ago. You hate the Tribune. My father was on that paper almost 20 years. And one afternoon, he lost everything that he had worked for. I was just a kid. Well, I saw what that did to him. All because Margaret Pinchon decided that she wanted a job that never belonged to her in the first place. It was a long time ago, and it has nothing to do with this. Don't you think I can keep those things separate? No, I don't. I don't think I could. And I'm prepared to bring this to the council force it to. One thing that I'm sure would never occur to you. Whatever else may have happened, I do have an opinion about the Garber's case. And what your editor did was wrong. The two of you were in your office and you quarreled. I need to know what happened the day Jack Hall was fired. You do not need to know that. I can't write the story without it. Miss Newman, you're not on some investigative assignment now. You're writing my autobiography. You talked me into this. You wanted a reporter. Now you're stuck with one. I beg your pardon. This is your own curiosity about some possibly titillating subject that's motivating you. Don't wave your high-flown journalistic principles at me. With all due respect, Mrs. Pinchon, I think you should get someone else for this. Are you retiring from your assignment? Or do you want to take leave of our whole association? Oh, my Lord. I can't believe it. I'd learned that lesson 20 years ago. I'm sorry. I know you were just doing your job, but you struck a nerve. Forgive me. You know, in order to do this piece, I don't have to write about what happened between you and Jack Hall, but I think I have to know about it. Then you must understand the times. I was in my 40s. And that age was very different for a woman then. The best times were supposed to be over. And then suddenly there was Jack. Oh, Jack Hall. Attractive, available, and extremely attentive. It was a lover's quarrel. That was part of it. We were getting closer. And things had just become really serious when Matthew died. You can imagine how I felt. Guilty about Jack and me. 
horrified about the responsibilities I faced. A lot of people assumed that Mr. Hall would be Mr. Pinchon's logical successor. Well, Jack certainly did. He was a very good managing editor. Matthew always had great reservations about giving him the ultimate policy-making decisions. But Jack was desperate to be the publisher no matter what it took. And I convinced myself the reason he went after me was to secure his position. Well, he thought he had all the cards. And he gave me an ultimatum saying it was all or nothing. I surprised him. I surprised myself. From what you're telling me, it seems you did the right thing. I did do the right thing, I think. But it was the way I did it. Well, that was my first taste of power. And I abused it. I have tried never to do that since. So now you know. I don't think we need all those details in our story. Good. I trust you all have had time to study the complaint against the Tribune by Councilman Garbus. <clears throat> Any further discussion? I'd like to move for a vote. Second. So moved. Any objections? I will abstain. So will I. You will? Yes. Very well. All those concurring with Mr. Garber's assertions in the complaint against the Tribune are warranted. Sending abstentions. Note the complaints are found warranted. You're wrong. Huh? <laughs> so Hall Sutton abstained from the voting. Big deal. It didn't matter by then, and she knew it. After manipulating the discussion, editorializing... Please sit down, Mr. Rossi. I'm too teed off. We are all teed off. Notice how nicely the rest of us control it. I'm infuriated because I've supported the council all these years. But the question now is, how do we acknowledge their decision? I say we don't acknowledge it at all. Charlie and I were talking about it. We'd like to run a story, straight news, reporting the council's decision. And next to it, we put an editorial with our response. And below that, we rerun Rossi's original article about Garbers. In other words, let the reader decide. Exactly. Excellent. I just hate giving those jokers any free publicity. I must admit, my initial reaction was to withdraw our support. Are you? Are you... Going to withdraw your support? Excuse me, let me say something. I've taken my licks on the council, and I think I have as much reason as anybody else to pull out. But I still believe in the basic principle of this profession monitoring itself. And if I could tough it out with Dr. Ms. Hall Sutton, or whatever the hell her name is, I think the Tribune can take it, too. Almost my very words, Mr. Hume. Okay, Lou. What's this? From Mrs. Pinchon. If anybody wants me, I'll, I'll just be back in a while. What are you reading? A present. Women with clout. My part. Bad title. I know. It's the piece I wrote on Mrs. Pinchon. She had it bound for me. Wow. You know, Rossi, we may have had our differences, but one thing I've always admired about you is your ability to keep a secret. Well, thank you. I mean, you're the only person on this newspaper I feel I can tell something to and be absolutely certain you won't betray my trust. 
Well, I think if you're any kind of a newspaper man, you have to be able to do that. There's something I'm absolutely dying to tell somebody. Do you give me your word you will never tell anyone, ever? Sure. Okay. Listen. Sure been a long week. Sure has. I'm all yours from Monday on. You're really sadistic, you know that. I am. Why? No. You can feel free to tell me. Rossi. I've been able to think of anything else all day. What's going on? Nothing. Is there, Rossi? No. Good evening, all. Hello, Mrs. Pinchon. Good evening. Hi. She's the sleuth People magazine calls the most ingratiating TV detective since Columbo. Anna Lee struts her stuff tonight on the A&E Mystery Movie. Now, why is a 10-year veteran cop taking unnecessary chances with his life? His partner steps in to solve a mystery on Police Story, next on A&E.